Hello, my name is Stacy McCauley, and I'm really excited to be here today to work with you on a system for learning your scales in a quick, efficient, and deep learning sort of way. I like to call this the think system because it requires that you think your way through your scales before you play them. If you do that, then you get to know your scales in a really wonderful, complete way, and then you can just get faster and faster and better and better at them. So just a quick word about why I call this the think system. If you've seen the, mu the musical, The Music Man, it's a movie from the 1960s, um, you know that it's the story of a traveling salesman who goes into a small town and he's kind of a con artist and he's selling band instruments to all of the kids in the town and he doesn't know how to play anything. So he convinces them all that they don't have to practice, that they can just learn their instrument through something called the think system. Think about the music and it will come out. And at the end of the movie, that's exactly what happens. Um, we know that doesn't happen in real life. You have to practice. But there's a little kernel of truth in there and that you sort of have to think about what you're doing before you can do it, before it can be effective. So that's what we're going to do while we're learning our scales. And if you haven't seen the movie, The Music Man, you need to. Most of my students come to their first lesson because they really want to learn their scales. They have something coming up, they have to be tested for their scales, or they have an audition or something, and they want to make them better. So they usually come in with their little scale sheet that they got in school and they've circled all the flats and sharps and they've made a start at learning their scales. But they don't really understand how scales are built or how to figure them out on their own or an intellectual understanding of what they're doing. It's all being done by rote. So the first thing I do is explain to them that we're going to learn how to build a scale. I ask them to not read the scales off of their scale page but rather to learn how to use the circle of fifths to learn how to figure them out. So I'll put the circle of fifths in front of them and I'll start explaining to them how it works and all of the information you can get from it. Um, it's, it's the way that leads to a deeper understanding and internalizing the knowledge of how to build a scale. The circle of fifths is a magical tool for musicians, and we really have to be completely familiar with the scales because it is the fundamental building blocks of what we do, and the circle of fifths will get us there. I'd like to walk you through this and really help you develop an understanding of how to build scales and how to understand what you're doing so that you know the key signatures, you know the flats and sharps. You don't have to go through and circle them. That's a very confusing way to learn your scales. That's how I learned. And I think this is a better way. Um, I think you can learn your scales faster and more completely. They become a part of you. And, and when you engage your intellect and understand what you're doing, then you're way ahead of the game. So we're going to get started and work with the circle of fifths. And good luck to everybody. So the first thing to understand is that flats and sharps appear in a very specific order. This chart shows you the order of the flats and the order of the sharps is exactly the opposite. All this means is if you have one flat in a key signature, that flat is B flat. If you have two, it's B flat and then E flat. If you have three, it's B flat, E flat, A flat, on through all of the flats. Now you'll notice that the first four letters of this flat order spell the word bead. It makes it a little easier to remember. So it's bead, G-C-F. Um, you can make something up to help you remember that. Greatest common factor is something a lot of my students use, but you can think of something else. Grandma can't fly, I don't know, something. And then the order of sharps is exactly the opposite. So if you have one sharp, it is always F sharp. If you have two sharps, it is F sharp and then C sharp. If you have three sharps, their order is always F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp, and so on. So here we have our magical friend, the circle of fifths. The circle of fifths starts at the top here with C major, and it goes around to the right by fifths. 
G is one fifth above C. A fifth is an interval of five steps. D is a fifth above G, A is a fifth above D, and so on. By putting the circle of fifths on your music stand, instead of a sheet with the scales where you go through and circle all the flats and sharps, not really understanding how this is built and put together, you will begin to understand how to build these scales on your own so that you know exactly what you're doing and why you're doing it. So we're going to start at the top of our circle of fifths with the key of C major. It's the orange key at the top. And as you, if you look above it, you see where it says key signatures and you have a treble clef with no flats or sharps. That is the key of C major. Now because it's the key of C major, we know we're going to start on C and end on C. So all we do is go up alphabetically through the musical alphabet, which is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and it starts over again with A. We're going to start on the C and go up alphabetically. Scales never have the same letter twice in a row. You would never have C, C flat, C, C sharp, anything like that. It's one letter of the alphabet at a time. And we're going to start at C and go up the musical alphabet with no flats and no sharps. So it's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. One way to practice your scales is to simply say the note names before you even try to play the clarinet. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and then say it in reverse. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Then pick up your clarinet and play your scale. If you will practice your scales this way, you're going to make fewer mistakes and you're going to understand what you're doing and why. Now, C major is a pretty easy key for most of us. And if you're in a band, your band director will probably be calling this B-flat concert. The B-flat concert scale for the band is your C major scale. So it has no flats and no sharps. This is the key of F major. Because of the name of the key, we know we're starting on the note F. We're then going to proceed up alphabetically but we know that when we get to B, it's going to be B flat. So you should be able to say the note names of the scale. F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. You've just learned your F major scale. Now let's do it backwards. F, E, D, C, B flat, A, G, F. Sometimes going backwards takes a little bit more practice because we're not used to saying the alphabet in reverse, but it comes pretty easily if you do it a few times. If you can tell me the note names of the F major scale, you can then play the F major scale. If it takes a little bit of time, do it one note at a time. Say the word F, play an F. Say the word G, play a G. Say the letter A, play an A, etc and do it that way a few times until you can then get to the point where you can play it as a scale, up and down. No music needed, and you're perfectly welcome to use the circle of fifths. <laughs>
I would recommend that you start by learning your flat keys up to three or four flats and then going back up to the top of the circle and learn your sharp keys up to three or four sharps. Then when you're comfortable with that, you can start adding the keys that have more flats and more sharps. And by that time, you'll understand how to build your scales. I hope this way of thinking about scales has proven to be helpful to you. I found it very successful in my own studio on all levels. If you can just get yourself to really solidify your knowledge of scales, you're going to see an amazing growth in your technique, your sight reading, all sorts of things. So please do, you know, work at this and feel pride when you make some progress. And it seems like it's going to take a long time because you practice slowly at first, but you're practicing correctly. And so you're actually going to learn them faster. So have fun and good luck.